Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Behold, the most bewitching dial at any price of the early 2000s. And today, we discuss the Omega Seamaster Professional Diver 300 meter, a professional diver with a long-legged quartz caliber. This is a precise watch that's an excellent daily driver for those of you who don't don't wish to compromise with your daily driver watch. You don't want to go Timex Iron Man. You don't want to go G-Shock. You want to maintain the integrity of a luxury product, the fit, the feel, and the gratification that comes with wearing something that is a lifetime implement and a tool built for a job. And this watch is both of those things. Easy to wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. It's a 41.5 millimeter case as I measure it from roughly four o'clock to 10 o'clock. It's a thin watch too, and this is where it really gets the edge over later automatics, especially the coaxials. 11.5 millimeters thick. The 2018 Seamaster Diver 300 meter is 13.7 millimeters thick, so this is a wonderfully flat, limpet-like watch on the wrist. Lug to lug, it's very wearable. 48 millimeters. I can wear this easily on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, and I would recommend it for wrists as small as 14 centimeters circumference. The solid end links of the bracelet, which by the way is identical to the mechanical chronometer, they flare out to 52.8 millimeters, but they do bend down around the wrist. You can see they have a downward thrust to them, so the watch doesn't look awkward even if you're borderline for wearing it with the bracelet. 20 millimeter lug spacings, so if you do own the chronometer version, you can actually swap straps and bands and use them alternately on your two watches. The bracelet has always been a highlight of these watches. From the first one in 1993, they were always somewhat of a hybrid between a dress bracelet and a sports bracelet. They're solid like a sports bracelet, and they've got plenty of ventilation gaps on the underside like a sports bracelet, but they also have a little bit of an elegance because of the intermediate staggered links, the polish and the satin contrasting, and the slight tumble home at the edge of the flanking links. It always had a little bit of a dress elegance, and given that this model family was famous for its accompaniment of 007 tuxedo and all, it's not a bad thing that it works well in formal attire. The clasp was a revelation in the 90s and remains one of the best today. You can see that there's still plenty of depth on the engraving on the clasp body. Twin trigger release, it's milled out all of a piece. This is the clasp that forced Rolex to seriously rethink its stamped oyster clasps. When this debuted, Rolex started work on the later machined solid block clasps with the easy links, or I should say the glide lock system, and this was what prompted the change. As you can see, even the fold-out is made of machined components. Very solid. It's a wonderful all-or-nothing pull-out, whether you're using it over a true dive suit or simply over a thick winter coat or sweater. A solid clasp, twin trigger release. Again, this is something else Rolex had to think about. Trigger release on an Omega at a fraction of the price when you had a clamshell on the Oyster. Like I said, this watch started a fire. Now here's the other thing. In 1995, when GoldenEye came out, the very first version of the SMP 300 that Bond wore was actually the Quartz Diver 300. So this watch is in good company. I'll also add that it has the classical lines we've come to love with the tapered and elegant sheer guards, the satin finished flanks, and the polished flaring bevels at the ends of the lugs. Also appreciate that the helium escape valve for you saturation divers is present and correct. James Bond used his as a grenade. And that's a wonderful conversation starter, even if you never use the part. The bezel. These have never had the grippiest knurling, but they are flat and elegant as a result. They don't have a sharp, awkward, purely functional cut to them. The detent is excellent. It feels good. It sounds good. And you can line up that luminescent pearl with the broad sword style hand. Broadsword style hand, one of the features of this dial design, which first debuted in the 1998 Seamaster 300 GMT, later translated to the Diver Watch, is broadsword hands larger indices. It's just easier to view than the skeleton hand models. The bezel is a special piece, all of high polish, not an aluminum insert, so not prone to scratching through an anodized surfacing. And it also features blue lacquer inlays, and you can see this watch has aged gracefully as none of the lacquer has been evacuated by subsequent wear and tear. The dial is an iridescent electric blue. Blue, bewitching. It's a combination of a rich blue lacquer with a metallic base. It is far more expressive than the standard matte blue Omega Wave on the chronometers. This is a wonderful memory from my childhood that has haunted my dreams for decades. I absolutely lusted after this thing in the Roosevelt Field and Whitman Malls on Long Island during my high school years. You can also see that it features a wonderfully accurate Omega 
quartz caliber 1538, so it'll jump two seconds at a time when it's low on batteries. That's the end of life indicator. It has a 42 month life on average, so about three and a half years, and also features a unique time zone function that would later be carried over into the caliber 8500 family. So this was a clever feature that allowed you to travel with ease, even jumping the date bi-directionally across the international date line. Of course, the watch does have hacking or stop seconds. The six jewel high grade Swiss quartz caliber, still water resistant down to 300 meters, and it effectively gives you set it and forget it precision with an accuracy of plus or minus 10 seconds per month. Quartz does have its privileges, and if you've got a broad-based collection of watches, sometimes you don't want to have to reset every single one of them when you return to a single reference, and the bottom line is with this watch, you'll never have to. Stunning, inside and out, and yes, I'm saying that about Quartz. I'm a fan. Become a believer on the watch box. Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter, radiant by day, radiant by night. It may be a quartz caliber, but that loom is batteries not included.